when you have these big parent meetings and you say, hey, we need someone to someone is never going to is never going to um, uh, volunteer. Right. They're not going to volunteer on their own. And uh, frankly, everybody's not comfortable with a leadership position. So throughout the video, they talk a lot about um, talking about tasks rather than con uh, rather than positions. Uh, they really emphasize having a new a new member coordinator to make sure that you're promoting a welcoming atmosphere in your unit. I love their their hint to remember not to talk scouting jargon, even things like den, right? Use hey, this is our grade level group. Um, let's see, and then matching skill sets to to positions. So I I also love their hint that you don't say no for someone else. I know when we're sitting in community, we're like, oh yeah. So and so would love to do that, and and somebody else goes, oh no, he just took a new job. There's no way. So let's make sure we never say no for somebody else, but feel free to say no for your own. Uh, the other topic was really all about conducting a parent orientation, and they really encourage you to do that 70 10 days after your recruiting event. Make sure it's on the calendar. Make sure the parents at your recruiting event or events know about that. And make sure that it's separate from a unit meeting. I think even when we're in a virtual world, if you can imagine, those of you that have done these, um, I think I've seen, of, the, of those of you I've seen, I know a lot of you do uh, parent orientations in your units. A lot of time we try to we try to meet that with a cub meeting so that the, the kids are doing activities in one area of the room and you're in the other area of the cafeteria or whatever um, really that's one of the advantages now that we're meeting virtually that's going to have is that you can you can hopefully carve out a time where you can have parents relatively undivided attention uh, before that meeting you're going to want to make sure that you have a list of tasks not just positions so rather than saying the pinewood derby committee you might say, hey, we need an event coordinator to arrange for the venue and decorations and whatnot for Pinewood Derby. We're going to need somebody uh, or two people to maybe to set up the track the night before. And lastly, we're going to need two people to run the software and record the race results. Um, if we were meeting in person, the video suggests that you, you use stickies for all of these tasks. And there's a point in the parent uh, meeting agenda, which I'm going to share with you. I think, Steve, that was one of the links they talked about and then didn't share the link, um, where you basically ask people to go grab a sticky. And the nice thing is, is if we were meeting in person, you would keep those stickies up. And matter of fact, I think, I think um, PAC 970 is on with us right now. And I think, Rich, if you're here, I think you, you did that. I think you, you uh, I think I've seen you do the sticky method. And the great thing is, is every meeting you went to, Richard's sticky board was still there. And it was kind of that lingering reminder that we still needed uh, volunteers to, um, to make sure that they, uh, that those tasks were done. Or then we were having to re, re, uh, evaluate, uh, um, PAC priorities to yeah, say, well, Nancy, maybe that, these tasks I, aren't that important. I, I had a bunch of notes and that was one of the things I had noted also was the sticky board. And I kind of said, you know, like, do, do we have a good virtual equivalent of that or is anybody come up with a solution for that? And one of the things they said about that sticky note system to be wary of is keep track of who takes the stickies. Cause if you have a bunch of exactly. stickies on the board and people walk away with them. Uh, then you know that that task is just gone right <laughs> right right now and again to my mind this is a w this is something that the virtual meeting has an advantage for so like when i'm doing merit badge counseling and i'm matching youth to tasks i basically do it essentially in one of the matching games like in a, a kahoot or quizlet and then everybody has uh has their name and a task uh matched so there are ways to do that um online it really emphasized that personal touch, making sure that uh, before your parent orientation meeting that people get a personalized text. So again, maybe that's a task. Maybe your more uh, outgoing parents are willing to take five names off of the off of the roster and text them and say, hey, I hope to see you at the parent orientation or that our first uh, meeting or whatever. Uh, and try to make it special, right? Try to make this a big kickoff. I love the suggestion that they had where you um, don't make it just for new parents, that you make sure your existing parents also come, and that way you have the voice of experience and encouragement uh, helping these new parents kind of get acclimated and setting that expectation that in your pack, your pack culture is that families participate. Uh, the, final, um, the final section or topic was really 
position specific recruiting. And that's, uh, we talked a lot about den leaders because for most hey, Nancy, PACs, that's- Nancy, I, I had one more thing I, I wrote down. Sure. Par parent orientation. And that was, yeah. they suggested like really having a dedicated scout book and scout book app training moment. Right. I know in my pack last year, you know, we used to use a scout land or another kind of scout centric planning thing. We transitioned partway through the year and I think it went pretty poorly generally, right? Like the parent level of interest in learning a new application and website uh, uh, system, right? It's just, it, it's a lot. And so, you know, even for us who had to use it, it, it was hard to manage two things at the same time. And so I like that idea of saying, hey, you know, let's sit down bring it up on the screen and walk people through a couple of things uh, to kind of break the ice on it. Yeah, great point, Steve, thanks. So the final the final thing was, again, this position specific. It was very den leader specific. And oh my gosh, folks, if you have not been keeping up, there are so many resources now to help make your den leaders' lives easier. So there are actually position descriptions. On scouting.org, there is a page for each rank. So there's a lion den leader page and a tiger den leader page and so forth that has handbooks, explanation of awards, uh, just a myriad of resources. And um, I'm really looking forward to you all uh, checking out the den leader experience on Scoutbook. It has been revamped somewhat uh, earlier this year. And I'm anxious to see because I know some of you early adopters were saying the Scout Book Den Leader Experience, which essentially is um, a scheduler and has a repository of all the handbooks that a den leader would need. Um, you were, the feedback you'd given me uh, last fall was that that was really inflexible, so that it was really hard when the when Scout Book said, okay, your first three meetings are Bobcat, and you were like, hey, my, my Weeblo stand has been together for the last three years, we don't need Bobcat, that it was hard to change. My understanding is that's been that's been updated and made easier, uh, but I'm gonna need you all to, to verify whether that's actually the case. So um, I wanna open it up to you all to share your questions, comments, tips, ticks, tips tricks, and techniques. Uh, but I will post those resources. And again, if if you can only do 10 minutes, I would really encourage you to to watch the video that we have proposed for uh, for roundtable. If you have a couple of extra minutes, there is a Cub Scout leader um, online training module specifically on this. And again, it was jam packed with uh, with links. And I'd encourage you to take that training module as well. So let's go around the room here. Adam, any any questions, ob observations? Um, and one of the things we have the parents do is just sign the sticky note, and that's how we keep track of how they, who has that job. Um, and then we create a roster or a list after the sticky notes get created as to who has which job. Um, it ensures that everybody gets a job. It doesn't ensure that everybody does their job, but you know. That's, That's true, awesome. and the video the video uh, specifically addresses that at the end there. Thanks, Adam. Great tip, Anthony. How about you? I think uh, the key for us too is just understanding how to operate that meeting in a virtual environment. I think that'll be key, which will be I think it'll be a little more of a challenge too to get maybe some of the people to step up in that way. It's easy to hide a little more in a virtual environment. Can be, can be, yeah, Anthony, great. And again, uh, if your pack doesn't have resources, if you need to borrow the, the district blue jeans, that's great. Uh, when you're making your pack budget, you may consider one of uh, one of you getting a uh, uh, an account um, with somebody like, with a with another provider, Zoom or something, so you have that uh, resource available for you. Hey, Brad, any, any ideas or questions or? No, I didn't really have any questions, I think, there are a lot of visual tools we can use through video conferencing. So I'm thinking in terms of slideshows or um, there are a number of different apps that you can interact with that produce things like sticky notes that you'd be able to visually pull from the need column to the completed column during a, a screen share. Gary. Um, you know, you know there's always like the uh, family talent surveys, right, that I think are a good starting point. And one of the things I think we're looking at are like what things we need to have honchos identified like right up front you know, that are more like the sustained long term. And then, to, you know, allow some placeholders for some of the stuff that's like further out, right? So hit the critical, you know, need positions up front and then 
uh, let the other ones be filled a little bit later, maybe when we get a little closer to normal. Awesome. Yeah. Prioritization is going to be critical. Liz, any tips from 851? We are still working on it and yeah, um, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to do that. Nawin is in the chat and she's in our pack and that is a not question. For 851, we have historically had signs up, but I think we've had poor follow-up. I mean, I've heard of the post-it note method, but I think for us, it's probably being more thoughtful about articulating all the little jobs and we haven't gotten to that point yet. Great, great feedback. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, how's things in 968 there in El Segundo? So, PAC 968 is pretty darn fortunate. Um, we have a lot of great parent participation, and given any opportunity, a group of parents will just stand in the corner and chit chat. Like, we all get along really well. So, I was, my first thought about this was, hey, we're just fortunate. We're lucky we got great parents. But then Jeff and I stopped and talked about it for a while, and we realized that, unbeknownst to us, the, the, older parents in the group were just modeling really good behavior and i think that we grew up thinking that was just the way it was so we had a scout master that was there for many many years and he was very cheerful very agrarious very social and he's just kind of trained all the den leaders to be similar very cheerful friendly outgoing and so we get to know all of our parents we get to chit chat and talk to all of our parents and so because of that, it's a lot easier to approach a parent, get to know them, and ask them to do a task. And so we, we don't use the sticky note method, although I must admit I'm a little bit intrigued by it. We just generally all sit around and talk about, hey, what parent would be good to do this? Who shall we approach? We invite them. We talk to them. And it's a very more social atmosphere where we're always talking about the things that need to be done. And then our committee chair is generally following up on all the tasks. So it's just a constant monthly thing of which tasks are each person doing and making sure that it gets done is that we made that the committee chair's job to be taskmaster, not to wow, do the task, great. but contact the person and say, hey, you got it or not. Great, great, awesome. You know, I know some PACs uh, use their uh, parent, parent meetings or committee meetings as sort of that that grown-up play date right and so they may bring out you know cheese and crackers or whatever a little hard to do in the virtual sense but depending on how big your unit is you know if you have a relatively small intimate unit i could totally see where you'd be before the parent orientation you'd be handing out little good you know you you doorbell ditch some goodie bags maybe it's just you know, a um, uh, uh, thing of popcorn or something and say, hey, we're all going to get together and, uh, and, and go ahead and, um, and share this meeting. And that's one of the great things about these videos, right, is you could say, hey, everybody, you know, we're going we're gonna to start 15 minutes early if you want to drop by and watch the, watch the movie and eat your popcorn, and then we're going to roll into the meeting. So awesome. Rolf? I'm going to segue just a bit to what is just absolutely our favorite part of kicking off a new scouting year, and that's collecting annual health, health forms. Ah, uh-huh. Um, are we expected to collect those at the kickoff of the year like we normally do? Because they're supposedly only good for a year. What's, what's the status of that? And I know a, a new health form was issued, oh, I think sometime in January after we encouraged everybody last fall to save there so they could just update the date, but that's no longer true. Yeah. So what kind of, can you give us an overview of the status I of would those? Say, and... I would say bottom line is as long as we're scouting at home, we don't need health forms, right? We're not going anywhere. So everyone is under the supervision of their own parents. So Rolf, I imagine that, uh, you know, kind of as a best practice, all you're trying to do at the beginning of the year is get all the paperwork done out. So you're not, you know, chasing people down for months and months and months. Uh, but with health forms, I would say, you know, you can probably let that go until we finally get permission to, uh, to meet in groups again. Does that answer your question? It does, and I, I was kind of looking at it from the perspective as I'd almost rather do it because people are used to doing it in the beginning of the year rather than trying to track everybody down mid-year or whenever we get back together. And then the other thing is that I learned the hard way is we cannot transmit those electronically. Exactly, yeah. And so that's so they one would thing have to be hard copy dropped right. off or mailed or something. 
Right, right. And so, you know, so way back in the dark ages when I was a Girl Scout leader, because, uh, you know, I, I, I started in GSUSA, uh, I had basically um, uh, an igloo cooler on my front porch, and that was the that was the drop off. So if you decide that for your families, you know, the habit is, hey, there's a whole bunch of paperwork at the beginning of the year, you know, you can email them blank forms, and then they can drop it off at at your at your. Uh, in my troop, we call it the the Wrangler of the big box of bureaucracy. Um, so, um, you know, but you're right. The, the one thing you cannot do with the health forms is have people scan them and email them and, uh, and keep them electronically. I do uh, real quick, Nancy. If, yeah, go ahead, Ralph. Uh, that I, I threw the comment up on chat. I don't know if I got picked up or not, but as far as collecting fees for the pack, we had tremendous success with Zelle. Zelle is bank to bank. Not everybody knows about it. Almost all banks support it. Some don't. But it gives you a record of how much came, who who it came from, and they can even put a note in there designating what it's about. Was it a camping fee that we were collecting? Was it you know the annual dues or so that it is super easy to use. The pack gets a notification on our pack email right away. You just have to attach an email to it, and we have a pack email that we use for that. So if for anybody else that is looking for ways other than to, and you can pay that way too, pay money's out. So it's all recorded. But it's uh, a yeah. it's great. Okay. Well, and I think that was the you know Tim's concern. And again, Ralph, you're right. You know, as as we're as we're having to to learn to do things virtually. You know, the the traditional concern. And those of you who serve on a PTA, I know you're familiar with this, right? The concern would be is if one person can if uh, can pay on behalf of the pack, so incur an expense on behalf of the pack without uh, without somebody else. Because even though, you know, even if you're using an ATM card, right, your bank statement's gonna say, uh, you know, who, who, that that the payment was made. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't prevent, it it doesn't basically provide you that too deep financial uh, oversight. So- um, It doesn't give you that, but it does tell you exactly who it went to. Yeah, yeah, so- Which you, uh, you wouldn't get that with an ATM card. That's just a, an anonymous right. That's a good withdrawal. Point. That's a good point, and I think I would imagine that BSA is gonna is gonna have to update our our uh, our financial um, uh, tips, right? Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Gary is saying yeah, two factor authentication available. That's a great that's a great suggestion as well. So um, well, you know, so I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Again, um, I'll hang out here for a little bit, and we'll have folks once this room is cleared. I'll go hang out in the main room. Uh, I want to leave you with the parting thought that I really, uh, I thought the video did a great job, and that is most folks who don't volunteer, don't volunteer because they were never personally asked. So just like Jennifer was talking about when you've developed a personal relationship with someone, and you say, hey, you know, could you help me out with, and you have a very specific ask, most folks are more than willing. And the video also makes a good point where if they say no, the good news is, is they didn't ignore you, right? They still engaged with you, and that may leave the door open for something else, you, you know, it, it, for something else that they may be willing to do, maybe something smaller, maybe something at a different time. Uh, but, you know, more many hands make light work. And, of course, as you know, Cub Scouting is a family program. So the more people we can get involved, the more, um, uh, more they're personally invested in the program, and the more likely that their children are, are likely to complete the program. So again, thank you for what you do. These are extraordinary times. Uh, I really appreciate all the, all the passion and dedication you're putting into it. Um, and if there's anything the Commissioner Corps can do for you or anyone on the district committee, uh, please don't hesitate to ask.